Welcome to Fjordor. This is Ark's latest map, released in June of 2022, and I am going to attempt to survive 100 days in hardcore. This challenge has been highly requested, and I am here to deliver. In this challenge, I will face brutally cold temperatures in the middle of the day, yet alone at night. And if I can compete with the treacherous conditions, then I still have to deal with all the dangerous creatures that this map possesses, as well as having to conquer the three Rayon bosses, Baylor the Gigantic Bee, Haitian Skull, a deadly duo, and Steinborn in its Ice Layer, then the Dragon, Megapithecus, and Broodmother. If I can defeat all of those, then I must face up against Venre himself, the hardest boss of the lot. I must do all of this whilst in hardcore, meaning one death and everything is over. It was day one and I collected some stones before seeing a couple dilos who were now much scarier to me than before as this was hardcore and any death meant the challenge would be over. Another worry was it was already cold and it's only midday. I needed to get warm soon before risking freezing to death. I punched a tree to get some wooden thatch and crafted myself a pick. I used the pick to get flint and stone before harvesting a bush for fibre and I crafted a couple spears, a hatchet and a campfire. With food being high priority, I killed the local dodos to get raw meat so I could cook it in the campfire, plus it would keep me warm as well. Next on the agenda was getting a full set of cloth armour to further help with the temperatures I was facing, as it was freezing. For I began to build a very small and temporary base, which consisted of a singular foundation and storage box. I was feeling quite good with my start, so I went out and took on the dialos from earlier. I needed to keep my distance though, whilst doing this as I was still playing hardcore. I was able to kill it and its friend without any problems. In return, I got a gift from the Ark Gods, a max level 150 PT, but I wasn't high enough level to even think about taming it just yet. Hopefully I see you around, Mr. PT. I bravened up and went down the beach to explore, hoping to find a moss shops, whilst also realising that round the corner could be a creature that would kill me, and end the run. Instead, I found a ruined shipwreck which gave me metal tools, which was amazing, as it was not even the correct level yet to craft them myself. So having the opportunity to get Metal Gear so early was a huge bonus. So with the loot secured, I quickly ran back to the safety of my base. It was also getting nearer to night time, and that meant it would be getting much, much colder. So I began placing standing torches around my base to make sure that was warm and good for the night. As I was unable to move far, I decided to make the most of my time and spoil some raw meat and make as many narcotics as I possibly could, before laying down and waiting for the night to pass. I made it through the night peacefully as the sun began to rise on day 2. Only 98 more days to go. I made a few wooden foundations as a way to increase my level on this map, so I could make high armour which was much better at combating the freezing cold temperatures than what I had already. Soon later I unlocked the wooden raft, which when crafted would give your player quite a good amount of XP. I took my raft out on a little trip, whilst making sure there weren't any sneaky elite sixties lurking nearby to ruin my day. I was aiming for this island, and I found a ruin which gave me a few more levels. On the island I just travelled to, I was looking for the one and only Mosh Chop, and I found one, and it only wanted mojo berries, so I fed it, but it only did 44% of the time. I checked out the other Mosh Chops, but that one wanted raw prime fish meat, and I wasn't able to get that. After waiting a while, it was ready to eat again, and it also wanted raw prime fish meat. So that meant I had to head out into the ocean, a place which isn't very noob friendly. And I decided to start hitting the sharks, trying to keep as close to the shore as possible for safety, but the sharks would just swim off. After a while, I was finally able to kill a megalodon. So I harvested the body and I returned to the moss chops. I fed the moss chops the raw prime fish meat and then had to wait once more. By the third time it wanted to eat, it wanted honey, and that wasn't an option for me right now. So I left and went back to base defeated. At base I made a refining forge before placing torches on my raft and heading out on my next trip. I found a level 20 tripe which I wanted. I was able to knock it out easily by kiting it through the trees. By midnight it finished taming and I brought it back to base my raft. I returned back to that area to find the level 150 PT that I spotted on day one as I felt I saw it fly over in this direction. But I must have been wrong as I could only find low rubbish levels and the 150 was not there. 
But by my base, this Sarko posed a threat, which I had to take care of. But for some reason, it just ran away whilst I was fighting him. I was getting tired of not finding this level 150 PT, so I settled for level 55. Whilst it tamed, I returned to the Sarko to finish the job, and get Prime Meat to help quicken the PT tame. Once Sarko was defeated, I collected the meat and returned to my PT, who I fed and then tamed. I went over to the Volcano Island quickly to get the chitin I needed for the PT saddle. I was able to get the chitin from these two Aranios that I dragged into the water and then killed, but I wasn't yet high enough levels, so before I could make it, I found some stone, crafted a bunch of stone foundations to help improve my level further, and because I would need them for my later base. This process would go on for the majority of day 4, till I finally got the saddle and was able to fly my new PT. The first thing I did was level up by flying through a few ruins, before I found level 130 PT, which was a massive improvement on my current one. So I bowled the flying animal until it was stuck on the ground and knocked out with some trank arrows. And then soon later, it was tamed. And that was the end of day 4. Once it was tamed, I went out and got a few levels from some more ruins, before finding a potential base location next to this small lake, where the area was nice and flat. Perfect location for a base building project, and I mean, it even had an amazing view behind it as well. What's not to love? I placed down a few foundations and storage, and began the long process of moving everything over. I also cleared out the area with my trike, whilst getting some much needed narco berries. One of the good things about this base was it being near a beaver dam, which made getting cementing paste rather easy. I did a quick metal run to get some metal smelting on the side. Next, I went out to the volcano island to kill a few mantises to get polymer. I used the polymer to craft a harpoon gun and nets, and went out to search for a high level Argentavis to tame. I ended up finding two level 135s next to each other, and after splitting them up, I netted one and began to knock it out. After shooting it with a bunch of arrows, it was out. But then a Rex decided to come over and say hi, and at this point I couldn't let the Rex ruin the tame, or potentially even myself. I took care of the Rex and was giving my Argus to meet to tame, when a Saber Tooth attacked, followed by another Rex. I tried my best to save the RG but in doing so, I forgot to take care of myself and almost died to the freezing temperatures. I managed to get some torches down in the nick of time to warm myself up, but that meant that I was now unable to help my Argentavis, as something went along and ate it. Luckily, I found the other Argentavis, so I knitted it and knocked it out before the end of the day. I waited around for a while and it eventually tamed. I now had my first Argentavis. The first thing I did was find and pick up a Dodicarus and took it back to base. By sunset, I finally knocked it out. Whilst it tamed, I went out to search for an Anki. I found a high level 1 being attacked by a group of Deinonychus, so I swooped down, picked it up and saved it, and brought it back to base where I knocked it out. Whilst the both tamed, I headed over to the Redwoods to find myself a Maywing. I spotted a level 145 who would be more than good enough for me. So I knitted it, knocked it out, and tamed it. The next day, my Dodecarus was tamed, but had fallen underneath the mesh. Thankfully, a simple whistle follow got him out. My new Dodecarus was going to be very important to me, as I wanted to build an actual base in this challenge, and I was going to need a lot of stone to do so. And these guys are stone gathering legends. But I also wanted a wood specialist, so I scooped up a beaver and took it home to tame. Whilst I was out berry farming, I returned to base to find something looking off. Something had killed my taming Anki, and there was a ditto walking around from the scene. This hurt me, so instead of harvesting its body after I killed it, I dropped it off a cliff. <laughs> you deserve that. I now needed to find another Anki, but luckily I found a max level X variant Anki on Volcano Island. I knocked it out, back at base, and began to farm thatch whilst it tamed. My beaver followed a similar fate to my Dodic by falling underneath the mesh again. But nonetheless, it was tamed. I immediately put it to work and began farming high amounts of wood. With the farming done, I began to lay down the starter foundations of my new base. By the next day, I had this. It's a work in progress, trust me. I completed the first floor and began to lay down the flooring for the second floor. Then took a wise break to go farm metal, as it made sense to have some smelting on the side whilst I began work on my big mansion. I then started work on the roofing, which was quite a difficult task with how my building was designed. Plus, falling off every now and then didn't help. 
it was making steady progress on the base building, but the one major concern was just how many materials I was actually requiring for it. I was having to do trip after trip after trip to just get stone on my Dodicarus, getting all the thatch I needed by hand or by Anki, and flying out to the nearby beaver dams and raiding them for the high quantities of wood which they had, which I needed. Once the house was complete, I placed some gates to secure off the local area, and this is how the final house looked. I'd say it's decent for my standards. I placed some storage boxes at the back of my house in my new storage area, and then placed down a smithy, mortar and pestle and fabricator to make my working station. With the base done, I wanted to do some taming, so I made a long neck, some ammo, and built a small refinery in my house. I went out to the ocean to kill jellyfish to get biotoxins, and had a little jump scare. Oh! 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 Where's that Megalodon come from? Oh no! Maywink, please, Maywink, Maywink, please. Oh, where did that come from? It just jumped out of nowhere. The next day I began placing irrigation pipes down so I could get a small greenhouse going, so that I could begin to meet kibble. I placed down the foundations and then the crop plots followed by the greenhouse glass, but I did need to go back on a quick crystal trip to make sure I had enough to complete the build. Obviously I needed something for the fertiliser, so I went out and found a Fiomia, which I brought back to base and knocked out. With the Fiomia tamed, I fed it a whole lot of stimberries to get a whole lot of good stuff to use as fertiliser, and then I planted my crops to let them grow. Back to the taming process, I spoiled a whole lot of raw meat and began to make narcotics. Whilst they were being made, I stole a few Deinonychus eggs with ease as the parents were busy fighting other things. I actually ended up stealing a fair few amount of eggs, but I wasn't ready to hatch them just yet, so I put them in a preserving bin. I now wanted to work on getting ACs, so I started off by crafting myself an electrical generator and output, and then going out to kill tech creatures to get electronics. Just not like this though. Oh, oh, it, why is it running towards a Deinonychus? Oh, 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 <laughs> it just got obliterated by them. After getting some actual electronics and then polymer from the volcano island, I was there to make a couple ACs. I placed them outside, got them hooked on electricity and began hatching two Deinonychus eggs, which were both level 140. By the end of day 18, they both hatched and I now had a pair of baby Deinonychuses. I imprinted them both on a simple walk and I now had Fluffers and Slightly Bigger Chicken, two amazing names. I wanted the Fluffers to become big and strong so I took him out on a levelling trip and I even managed to kill an Alpha Raptor with him. But back at base I began to craft shocking trank darts with the biotoxin I had gathered from earlier and then headed out on my Anki to get more metal. One thing I did notice was my narcotic crafting was drying up as I ran out of spoiled meat and I had no more in my trough, so that meant one thing. Killing montage. With a good haul of meat collected, I began to split it and spoil it. Whilst I did that, I began to farm narco berries needed on my trike. With all the meat spoiled, narco berries farmed, I began to mix the two in a mortar and pestle to make more narcotics, and I was using the narcotics to make even more trank darts. The next day, I wanted to go back into the ocean, so I made myself some scuba gear and then flew over on my Maywing. I was there to kill Sinatrius, the jellyfish, to get biotoxin. I did have a bit of a scare though when a Megalodon attacked me, but thankfully it went for my Maywing and not me. Despite the scare, I continued to kill more jellyfish, as I was needing a lot of biotoxin. My mission had left me with 400 biotoxin. That should be enough for now I think. In fact, they were immediately put to use by crafting more shocking trank darts. I also thought it would be smart in its 100 days to use kibble to tame. But to make kibble, I needed eggs, so I flew off to the redwoods to find maywings. One of the great things about maywings is that they can drop any tier of eggs, whereas all other creatures are restricted to only one tier, and maywing can produce basic all the way up to exceptional. But getting these maywings almost cost me the challenge as I was stunned by a microraptor, but thankfully my maywing dealt with them and I was safe for now. I brought my new maywings back to base and immediately got a sample egg. 
I also went out to take a few dodos so that I could get eggs to make an item called the S Plus Hatchery. This cool item collects all fertilised eggs in the area and begins to incubate them for you, only needing re-fertiliser to power. So with all the dodos tamed and mating, I was able to collect the 20 eggs needed and make myself the S Plus Hatchery. I then placed down the S Plus Hatchery and powered it with the re-fertiliser needed. I then saw the Deinonychus near my base had spawned in again, and you know what that means? It means more eggs. So I led the group off a cliff and had free access to all their baby eggs. Once I collected all the eggs, once I collected all the eggs I could find, I began to hatch them so I could later breed them and get even more eggs. And whilst doing that, I was still growing my collection of different eggs from my Maywings. Next, I went out on a bit of an exploration and found this massive cave entrance but it had a few too many hostile creatures in it for my liking, so I quickly left and went back to fetching more eggs, so that I could turn them into exceptional kibble. But to make that kibble, I needed Lazarus's chowder, and after getting the items required, I was able to craft a few, and then began the kibble production. My next goal was to make an indie forge, but I was quite a few materials short. I collected all the nearby materials I could, but they ran out, and I even went over to the Volcano Island again, more specifically the Wyvern Trench to farm. A horrible idea. No, no, oh no, oh this is so bad. No, please not now, please. Oh, oh I think I'm okay. Oh, that was way too close. I almost lost it there, man. What am I doing? I ended up going back into the trench, but this time into the tunnel that led out, and it was empty. So I was able to begin farming the much needed crystal. I then killed a couple mantises on the beach and used a chainsaw to farm their body as it's the most efficient way to get organic polymer in the game. Before leaving Volcano Island I did one quick metal run and went back to base. With all the ingredients ready I crafted the Indie Forge in the Fabricator. I placed my new Indie Forge at the back of my house replacing the old refining forges that I already had but unfortunately it was taller than the roof I had built in my house. A slight miscalculation made by myself. With the forge made, I needed to begin raising an army strong enough to take on everything. So I wanted Rexes. My search for Rexes led me to this cave. Obviously there's no Rexes in here, but I wanted to explore it anyway, and I'm so glad I did as this cave was just so epic to find. With all its details and tributes to those who helped, or just creators that like the guy who made this map, it was really awesome to see. Close by I found another cave and this one had three different portals in it and I chose one of the portals and it went to a place called Asgard, one of the three realms available. I used a teleport on the yellow portal and went over to Asgard. Once I was there I continued my searches for wrecks in the beautiful autumn looking forest landscape. After doing an almost complete lap of the realm I finally found two rexes, a level 60 and a level 150. With the wreck spotted, I began to make the infamous wreck trap, which I believe Captain Fat Dog designed. Using my Deinonychus, I lured the wrecks into the trap, and it was stuck. With the wrecks down, I fed it the exceptional kibble I had been crafting over the last few days, and left it to tame. And whilst it tamed, I found myself another wreck, a male level 145. Perfect! I built the same trap as before and then knocked it out. And then I fed it raw prime meat and left to go to the first one who had now finished taming. But an alpha raptor spawned in, so I decided to take that out. As these guys on Fjordor dropped for something called runestones, which I needed for the boss fights. And it turned out that Asgard was where all the alpha raptors were hiding all along, as I found another and killed another. And then I killed a third. I was then back at my taming rex, where another pair of rex spawned in nearby with another one being level 145, and I'm not going to pass up the opportunity to tame it. I got the new Rex into the same trap that I used just before, and then I knocked it out. Soon later, the first of the two Rexes was tamed, and then by the end of the day 23, the third and final one finished up taming. Despite taming those Rexes, I wanted to go bigger and better, and get either a Kaka -ka or a Giga. So I checked one of the spawn locations, nothing. But then I checked the second location, Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a Giga. Oh, it's an R variant as well. What level? Oh, oh my, it's a level 140. <laughs> it's the first one I've seen and it's a level 140. With the target acquired, I rushed back to base to get everything ready to tame it.
But before I could tame it, I needed some metal. So I went out and tamed myself a pair of tech parasaurs, so I could begin to breed them and harvest the babies for scrap metal. Some of the metal was to be used to build an egg incubator, which I used to start my Rex mutation breeding. By hatching these base females, whilst they raised up, I crafted myself some flak armour, and then another long neck, and headed out to the Giga that I spotted before. I used the simple metal cape and bear trap method, but as I lured it in, it hit my mailing one too many times and almost killed it, with it only just surviving on 100 health points. But now it was time to shoot it with a gazillion darts. Early the next morning, I finally knocked out and force fed a bunch of narco berries before rushing back to base to craft a kibble, as I kind of forgot to bring it with me. I soon returned and then tamed the Giga. I got back to base, gave it a saddle and went out on a little trip together. Back at base, my Rexes had finally grown up, so I could begin breeding for mutations. Whilst they were busy, I killed some more tech parasols and harvested their body with a chainsaw, as it's the most efficient way to get scrap metal off them. Next, I set off my PT to find a very specific creature, a moss chops. I wanted one so I could use it as a sacrifice, so that I could tame a Desmodus, one of Fyodor's unique creatures. With my tamed moss chops, I brought it back to base and leveled it up by killing some more baby Rexes. I put all the experience that it got into health so that it could hopefully could survive the potential attack from the Desmodus. I then bred some more tech parasaurs and whilst they raised I began the long process of using a syringe to get blood from myself, being careful to not kill myself though as that would be a big whoopsie daisy on this hardcore challenge. Once they were grown I slaughtered them. This brought me a lot of metal and soon later I also got my first mutation on the Rexes. With the metal that I just smelted, I crafted a grill and began working towards a chemistry bench, only now needing cementing paste and organic polymer. And I also wanted an industrial cooker. So I quickly went over to the nearby lakes, stole some cementing paste from the beaver dams, before going over to Volcano Island on my Giga to kill mantises to get organic polymer. With the materials gathered, I was able to make the industrial cooker. I hooked it up on the irrigation and then went out to farm honey from this frog which was a unique feature to Fjordor, and I thought it was quite cool. This honey was to be turned into exceptional kibble, in my brand new industrial cooker, and I managed to make myself 23 pieces of kibble as well. I then checked up on my moss chops, who was still healing, but I was having doubts about only using one for the tame, so I went out to get myself a second. I quickly found one, which only wanted mojo berries, so I tamed it. I brought it back to base, leveled it up by killing some more baby rexes, before the levels going into health. With the two moss chops healing, I got some more blood packs, and I found out that you could actually get infinite by using medbrews as they give you 40 HP, whereas a syringe only takes 25 HP away from you. I quickly got some more berries on my trike to help make even more medbrews. To help my moss chops heal, I thought it'd be best to get a snow owl, so I tracked one down, trapped it, and netted it with my net gun. Annoyingly, it did fly off though, once it was unstuck, but its tall board had risen high enough where it still knocked out. I've had exceptional kibble and not long later it was tamed. At base I put some levels into stamina and began to heal my two moss chops using one of the snow owl's abilities. This ability wraps its wings around the creature and heals them up much quicker. As final preparations to tame its modus, I crafted myself a bunch more net guns and flew over to one of the caves where they spawned. But I had forgotten one thing, my moss chops, so I quickly had to fly back to base but now it was time to tame its modus. Back in the cave I spotted the first one, a level 90, but it was mate boosted, which meant there was at least one more there. Next I spotted level 25, but they were both female, which meant there was at least one more there, the male. So I netted the first one, and then they all came flying towards me. I netted a second, and the remaining two picked up a moss chops each, and commenced the taming process. One was a level 85, and I had no interest in that, so I netted it as well leaving the best one free to tame, and this best one turned out to be a whopping level 130. As it continued to fly around my moss chops, it ended up picking me up instead, 
and that finished the team. Unfortunately it wasn't a perfect team, but it was a still good Desmodus. On the plus side, both my Mosh Shops survived without really taking too much damage. At base I made my Desmodus a saddle and leveled it up by killing, yep, you guessed it, some more baby Rexes. And then I went out and killed some big guys to see myself getting a lot of blood packs from the kills. And it turns out these blood packs can be used to make something called a Sanguine Elixir, I hope I said that right, which adds 30% to your team. Next I went over to Volcano Island to do a checkup in case a Giga spawned. Wait, I can hear those, oh I, I know what this is, I can hear the footsteps. Oh, this is what I think it is. Oh, it is. Oh, I love these guys. Oh, look at the colours. Oh, you're kidding, it's a level 145. What? What is my luck with these levels? I found two big guys and they've both been 140 plus. That's incredible. It looks amazing. I, I, I think that's probably the prettiest I've ever seen. With the car hatcher spotted, I quickly flew back to base and hatched some more baby Rexes to use as sacrifice to tame it. I'd wasted no time as I was back on Volcano Island ready to tame the next morning. I dragged the lifeless corpse of a baby Rex over to the carcher, who sniffed the air, wandered over to the body to eat it. I ran away and then brought it a second one, but it turned out that all it wanted was just the one baby Rex, and I was now able to ride it. So I hopped on its back and went on a rampage, killing everything in sight. As I killed this final Anki, the taming process was finished and I had my very first Karcher of the 100 days. It was a level 217 and had gotten 37 points into melee. Next I used my Anki to get some much needed metal, which was then used to craft the Karcher saddle, and that allowed me to level my Karcher up by killing some more baby Rexes, with the levels only going into melee as that is the only stat worth levelling on these guys. With the new levels I was able to kill an Alpha Karno, an Alpha Rex super easily but I soon returned back to base to start work on my next tame. I started by making fish baskets and then attempting to build some fish trap contraption on a raft, but that failed horribly. And to make things even better, I got stunned by Baryonyx and that very well could have easily killed me were it not for my Maywing saving me. Instead of building a weird raft trap contraption thingy, I found out that I could just easily use cages, which were much cheaper and easier to use. To use the cage, all I had to do was place the basket in the water, catching the fish inside and wait for the basket to trap the fish. Much, much easier than my original plan. Well, only if you aren't getting attacked by a bunch of piranhas. With the piranhas evaded, I was able to collect my first fish and began to collect many, many more just to be safe as I was going to tame a shadow main and I wasn't sure how many fish it would actually want. I brought them all back to base and let them loose in the pond so that it wouldn't suffocate. Next, I made some bug repellent and a set of ghillie armor before picking back up my fish and heading over to Asgard. If you couldn't tell by now, I was looking for shadow mains, which spawn in the blue purpley forest area in Asgard. But I was doing laps of it and it was eerily quiet, until it wasn't, as I found not one, but two level 145 shadow mains. But now, I just had to wait until it was morning time, and one was all alone. It was soon morning and one of the shadow mains seemed to have gotten itself stuck in a tree the perfect opportunity to tame it. I went over to scope out the area and found a second one close by, and I just couldn't risk trying to tame it with another one in the area. That would be far too risky considering the challenge I was doing. The other one eventually walked far enough away, so I took my chance, which almost backfired massively as it woke up just as I approached. I turned, ran for my life, fearing the worst, yet the shadow mean didn't aggro one to me. I must have just got super lucky. On the second try, I crouched as I approached, and this seemed to work, as I fed it and ran back to safety. I crouched over a second time, fed it, then a third, then a fourth, then a fifth, and finally a final sixth time when I was able to finish the tame. I quickly cryoed it and ran away trying not to waste another second in this horrible area. I brought my new shadow main back to base and leveled it up by killing some more baby rexes. But then I hatched some baby rexes which I didn't kill, and instead of raised these up as these guys would be my boss fighting army. With them claimed and cryoed up, I threw them out so that they could raise up side by side, almost like a nursery. But to do the bosses, I needed artifacts, so we made a GPS and went out cave hunting. Except the first cave I went into didn't exactly have an artifact in it, but I was there for enough of reason. But first, I had to take care of this wyvern, which had been following me the whole time, 
and what better creature to do that with than my Karcha? As I ploughed my way through the cave destroying everything, I made my way into the final room and killed this Magmasaur, then used my Desmodus to fly down into the lava pit to collect myself one of the Magmasaur eggs that were just lying about. I checked the levels and took the high level one and quickly flew away. I brought it back to base and popped in the egg incubator and waited for it to hatch. With it hatched, I named it Iron Muncher and then left it whilst it grew up. I was going over to the snow to find myself a Utyrannus, and I did, a level 135 to be precise, which was more than good enough for me. I netted it and eventually knocked it out. Once down, I used a Sanguine Elixir and finished the tame in the middle of the night with Kibble. I made it a saddle and leveled it up by killing, yeah you guessed it, some more baby Rexes. The Rexes that I'd actually let live from earlier were now fully grown, so I began to let them heal with my Snow Owl. But as I went to get a second batch to finish the army, I got another mutation which I just couldn't skip. So I packed up the first batch of Rexes as they were no longer of use to me, and let my newly mutated Rex grow up as I headed over to the Redwoods to tame myself an Otter, which annoyingly needed two feeds, but nonetheless it was tamed. Next I went back to the Baby Rex killing as my Magmasaur had fully grown up now and needed some levels. With that sorted, I went out and finally did my first artifact cave. The one in the snow, but for some reason I did forget to cry in my Maywing. You might want to remember that for the, in a few minutes time. I made my way inside, immediately threw out my Karcher and began the rampage killing polar bears, polovias, direwolves and all other critters that were in the cave. A fun fact about this cave, when the map was first released you could actually tame the super high level direwolves in this cave, which kind of made it a bit OP. I did have one massive scare in this cave though, where a Polovia stunned me off my Karcher, but luckily I stayed on top. But the Karcher began walking backwards and almost fell down a ditch. Remember how I mentioned my Maywing from a few minutes ago? Well, as I entered the final room, this happened. It had been killed by a wolf. Rest in peace, Perryman. In the arms of the Despite the misery of losing my Maywing, I made my way into the final room in the cave on my Desmodus where there's still quite a few creatures hanging around. On my Desmodus, I led the final few creatures off the edge into the death pit and shot the rest to death, before carefully trying to get the artifact without disturbing this Palovia, which was burrowed just a few metres away. I managed to quickly snatch the artifact and fly away. On my way out, I spotted a yellow cave job, which gave me some quite good loot. I got out of the cave and spotted the wolf which murdered my Maywing, but I wasn't in the mood for revenge so I just left it. At base I placed my first artifact into the pedestal and then went out to get another. This cave was also in the snow and I had to fly down this tight passage on my Desmodus, but I got dismounted at the bottom by the water so I had to run away from all the onyx. I opened this blue drop which had some terrible loot inside and then began to destroy this oddly placed rock which looked like it was blocking the route. Next I got my Karcher out to take on the many Megalosaurus and other creatures before I flew into the final room and collected the artifact of the hunter. I then had to break another rock to get out the cave as the cave had two different entrances. So I flew out and that was two out of the ten artifacts collected. I placed this one on a pedestal as well and tried to make the long neck BP that I'd gotten earlier, but I still needed more metal. So I took my magma saw out to a metal deposit and found a ton of it. Whilst the metal was smelting, I went on a trip to see if there were any giggles or cartridges that spawned, something I'd actually been doing daily since I tamed the first one. And finally something had spawned, a carcher. I checked its level and gender, and it was a female. Ah, uh, I already had a female. But I still decided to tame it anyway, as I felt taming it would be the quicker method instead of killing it. So that I could hopefully get another one to spawn in. So I killed a baby rex, went over and dragged it over, but it aggroed onto me. Thankfully I was still on top of this hill and was safe. Once it calmed down, I brought over the rex again, it sniffed it, then ate it, and now it was ready to be ridden. I killed the remaining creatures needed and it was tamed. I had a new carger that I was never going to use. Next I went back out caving, using my desmodus to avoid this difficult lava parkour, which seems a bit cheesy to me. But I didn't design it this way so I'll just take advantage of it for now. I had to kill a few onyx who were protecting the amazing red drop who had an ascendant pump shotty hiding inside. Then I got the first artifact of the cave before going to the other side, killing some more onyx who were protecting the artifact and annoyingly one of these gave me mega rabies. And mega rabies on a hardcore challenge with no mega brews available is not a good place to be. 
I quickly caught the artifact and found a yellow drop which had another Mastercraft Longnick BP in it. I looted it and returned back to base where I was able to overcome the Mega Rabies that I had just got, and compared the new BP to the old one and it was actually better. And all I needed to craft it was some wood, so I quickly went out with my chainsaw, harvested a tree, drank an XP potion and crafted the Mastercraft Longnick Rifle, which got me a 0.4% increase? Next I crafted scuba game my fabricator and went out to the ocean to look for one thing, a basilisk. The first one I found was a rubbish level, but I soon found the level 130 which was good enough for me. I aggroed the mantas and led them away, so that I could get the tame in peace and not have any of them bothering me. Before returning back to the basilisk and feeding it kibble, I fed it a couple more times and eventually had a brand new basilisk added to my collection. The small pond next to my base was actually quite deceivingly deep and had more than enough room to fit in my basilisk. So I let it rest there before grabbing some baby rexes to let it kill and level it up. I really got to stop using so many baby rexes to kill and level stuff, those poor guys. Next I crafted a few tree sap collectors and placed them on a tree in the redwoods. Then I was in the water, entering my next cave. Once inside it was like an underground maze, with these statues which shot at you so I had to be very careful. But in the end I still got shot. I found these glowing colours which had numbers next to them, obviously something that I needed to get out of the cave. Next I found the colour green, with the number 1, and then stumbled into a room where I submitted the code. It had already given me blue being 4, so I had all the necessary codes. Once they were all entered, this rock lifted up, and I was through into the next part of the cave. It seemed I had to do it all again though as I found the colour purple with the number 2. Although this place now did have a few death drops which meant I had to be careful moving around. Then I found a yellow drop with an ascendant long neck BP in it. Before finding the colour blue with the number 4. Then I found the room where you entered the codes and used a bit of guesswork to solve the code. Once again another stone door rolled up and I was through into the room where I could finally collect the artifact of the massive. Then I teleported back to base where I began to hatch the rexes for my boss fighting army. I threw them out and let them grow whilst I went out to search for a Lystrosaur to help with the levelling process when they are older. I tried out Kibbit on it but it only did 13%, someone try and explain that to me. Whilst waiting I got jumped by a Pego that tamed, and to be honest I don't remember what happened to him at all. I tamed the Lystro and then finished hatching all the necessary Rexes. Once they were grown I used the Lystro to give an XP boost and began the mass exodus of baby Rexes and this went on for quite a while as I had a lot of rexes to level. I ended up getting bored, I really wasn't joking, I spent a few good days doing all of this. I went over to do the Redwoods cave, I managed to fit my cards from inside and began to murder everything. In fact I was killing so many creatures that my screen was just becoming full of death messages. I eventually got to the final room where I collected the artifact of the strong. Next I was back in the water, doing a proper water cave this time, and I was rather glad to obtain my basilo, as the immunity to jellyfish shocks was sure going to come in clutch in this cave. The nice feature of the basilo made this cave super easy to do, and I was able to kill everything without a worry of being stunned and dismounted. I got to the end of the cave, collected the artifact of the devourer, and quickly left. I was now building up quite a cool collection of artifacts in my base, my attention now turned back to the Rex though, as I went out to get metal to make Rex saddles so I could continue to level them up by killing more baby Rexes. But I would also been checking for the Giga daily and finally found one. Oh hello there, oh you look amazing, oh look at the yellow on the back, it's, oh it's level 100 as well, not too bad. And you remember that long BP I found? Well I wanted to craft that before taming this Giga. So I went out my magma sword to get some metal, but I still needed wood to craft it. Once that was solved, I used an XP potion and crafted it, and this time I'd gotten very lucky, as it came out with a solid 40% boost, much higher than the previous 0.4% boost that I'd got before. Now I just needed to craft the shocking trank darts and collect the kibble, and then I headed out to tame the big guy. I placed down the simple metal gate trap lured the Giga in whilst I was flying around in my Desmodus. Once it was in, I flew back around and easily secured it in, much more easily than last time. 
With the Giga securely in the trap, I sat on my Desmodus and fired many, many shots at it until it finally went to sleep. Once it was knocked out, I went around killing creatures on my Desmodus to craft an elixir. And after waiting around for a while, my new Giga was tamed and it was time to take it back to base to breed with my other one. Except for one crucial part. Both of the gigs I tamed were male. Despite the tragedy, I went out collecting materials such as cementing paste and polymer to make a chemistry bench. I did have to kill some poor baby penguins to get the polymer so that I could craft the chemistry bench. Then I placed it down so that I could mass produce narcotics and other stuff. Then I farmed wood to be turned into charcoal, but to make the ammo needed, I needed to farm some more stone to get flint to produce spark powder. With that done, I was able to craft ammo for my shotgun. I then went on exploring and finally found the male Carcodontosaurus I needed, who was in a bit of a rage right now. Once it calmed down, I fed it a baby Rex and it was all mine to ride and finish the tame. I finally tamed it, immediately brought it back to base to begin breeding with my female Karcher. And whilst they did their thing, I went back to levelling some more Rexes. After a lot of waiting and killing baby Rexes, I finally hatched a Karcher with good levels and a colour pattern of the mum. Now I just had to wait until it was fully grown. So back to the baby Rex killing. After the Rex levelling, I went over to the Volcano Island where I finally spotted the female Argiga that I'd been after for so long. So I immediately began to build the trap, luring it in and securing it off behind so it couldn't get out. Then I began the long process of knocking it out, eventually knocked out and I pumped it full of narcotics before going AFK. Let's see if you can guess where this is going to go. Oh my god! No, 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 uh, no, oh, it's, oh no, it's, oh no, it's woke up. Oh, that's the first time that's happened to me in a while. Oh, at least it's still in the trap. What? The only positive thing about that mistake was that it was still inside the trap, so I was easily able to knock it out again. And this time I gave it much more narcotic before going up to get prime meat as I lost the kibble when it woke up. I did take a quick trip on my Desmodus to get an elixir and my new Giga was tamed. With the Giga tamed I began breeding it with my female back at base and whilst they were busy I went out to collect the sap from the sap collectors I had placed early in the 100 days. Before going out into the ocean where I had a bit of a jump scare as I was attacked by a Megalodon, but not any normal Megalodon, an Alpha. Luckily I was able to get it back onto my Basile before I took too much damage and I promptly killed it. Getting some much needed runestones from the body. I then swam around and found this barrier. Behind it was an underwater world which I thought looked really cool, so I explored it a little bit but there just wasn't anything here really. I left and finally found what I'd originally been looking for. This small tunnel in the ocean which leads you down into the some sort of ocean abyss area and I was hoping to find a Tuso or the Alpha variant. The only thing I did find though was our max level Moser and a couple Plesios, no Tuso. I quickly teleported away and then realised I didn't even have to kill Tusos to get Black Pearls on this map, I could easily get them from the Magma Saw Cave. So I flew back over to the cave, cleared it out with my Karsha, then collected the Black Pearls by hand before teleporting away where I somehow got Mega Rabies. I love this game man. The black pearls were then used to make absorbent substrate, which was then used to make a gas mask, which then allowed me to take on the swamp cave. So I made my way over to the swamp cave, ready and prepared. Once inside, I threw my cartridge out and it surprisingly fit, and then I began torturing everything. Once everything was slain, I used my back to fly across to the artifact and collected the artifact of the brute and quickly teleported back to base. I still had two more artifacts to collect though, so I quickly flew over to the lava cave and got the artifact of the immune, before going back into the water which was only needed to access the cave. I cleared out everything with my karcher and then my shotgun, but I did get hit one too many times by this scorpion so I was forced to take a quick nap. Once I awoke I got the artifact of the clever. Back at base I spent some time healing up my rexes who were now levelled and began to hatch some more gigas as I wanted to use an army of them for the rayon bosses on this map. So I threw them all out and let them grow up and went out to get some raw meat as these guys will burn through food as they ray- Oh, um, where are they gone? They've already starved to death, what? Dude, 
What the hell? I was literally gone for like a minute. That's it. I hatched up some more and this time had food to spare. And a few days later, they were fully grown. And it was time to start leveling them by killing some more baby rexes. Baby rexes are the real MVP of this 100 days. I've used and abused so many of the poor little fellas. It took a day or two, but my gigas were fully leveled and healed, and it was time to start taking down the rayon bosses. I gathered the runestones I had and went out to take on my very first one. I got into the cave where the summoner was, threw out all my gigas, and was ready to fight. Right, where's. There we go. Here we go. Come on, Baylor, bring it on. Alright, get on my Karka. There we go. And attack. Oh, oh my. What is that damage? Yo. That was like seconds. What? <laughs> what? With the fight defeated, I went around to try and find the relics. I searched the body of Baylor, but nothing. I then looked around to see if it had dropped on the floor in any other loot bags, but there was nothing. This was quite concerning as I needed the relic. I then tried to summon it in again, but it had an hour's time delay on it, which was rather annoying. So as I was unable to do it, I teleported out and decided to move on to the next one. I teleported over to Asgard and began killing creatures on my cart chart to raise its frenzy level before going over to the summoner and summoning in both Haiti and Scott. I quickly got onto my Karcha and commenced the fight. Uh, I don't... I'm just going to go for this one first. I'm not sure if there's like some sort of tactic that I have to do. But let's just go for this one. Oh, what is happening? Oh, why are so many creatures on fire? Alright, that's one down. And that's the second. I think my gigas are too strong because... This is going way too quickly. I'm not complaining. Or maybe I am, but I'm not complaining. With the fight done, I looted the bodies and finally got the artifacts that I needed, getting both Haiti and Skull's relic, as well as getting some rather good loot, I must say so myself. I then quickly went over to the Wyvern Trench and tried to take on the Wyvern, but I lost my otter, which was somehow killed. So in revenge, I netted one of the Wyverns, got my long net out, and began to knock it out as I needed one thing from these wyverns, specifically the female varium. I needed to get wyvern milk, as this would help me combat the cold in Jotunheim. I quickly tamed myself another otter and then teleported myself over to the freezing barren landscape that was Jotunheim. I flew around my maywing a bit and searched for the cave entrance. I finally found it and was ready to fight Steinborn. Alright, come on you big icy bear. Um, help, um... I'm stuck. Okay, no, I'm not. Um, if you didn't know, in this fight, it is much better to use Gigas as this guy takes damage reduction to like all other creatures. But with Gigas, it oh, it's just it's too easy. Look at it; it's just too easy. Already halfway, and it's been like what five seconds, and it is over. Uh, it's, that's just way too quick. With the fight over, I looted the bodies and got Steinborn's relic, before going back to base and collecting my boss Rex army, to one of the portals. This portal was for the Megapithecus. I had all the artifacts, but I was short on the tributes. So with the tributes noted, I went over to the swamp to kill Sarkos for Sarko skins, Thylers to get Phyla claws, although one did somehow almost kill me. Then the Spinos for the sails. And after a while of collecting things, I finally had everything ready to take on the Megapithecus. This is the first big fight I'm doing, and I'm a bit paranoid that I'm forgetting something. I hope I'm not cold in there. That would, oh, that would be tragic. Right, here we go. Alright, get my UT. Everyone... Oh, wait. Oh, this isn't the same place as the island. I don't, I don't think there's any, like, drop areas or death pits all right everyone just go forward so we, we're just gonna storm this guy oh we spotted us go 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 on need to make sure they're fear rolled no courage to watch fear rolls one thing ow whoa 1.5k damage on his throwing rock thing damn He 
only does like 400 damage on the small attacks, but it's just that massive rock attack that's really hurting. But, oh, come on, we're almost there now. I don't think I see any blood on my guys either, so this is... Yeah, there we go. This has gone really well, that fight. Enough time had now passed where I could summon in Beta once again, so I did that. This time I had to make sure that I got the relic as I couldn't waste these many runestones fighting and not getting stuff. I quickly demolished Balon once again and quickly searched bodies to see which one had the relic and this time I actually found it. I then began some more tribute hunting killing Brontos for sauropod vertebrae and I needed quite a few of these. I killed some more Sarkos for Sarko skins and after a while I had everything needed to summon in the Alpha Broodmother. So I went over to the summoner and did exactly so. Once inside the arena, I got my U-Tyrannus, whistled, attacked my target on the Broodmother, and sent my Rexes in. I began courage roaring them from the start as this fight was going to be a much more difficult challenge than the Megapithecus. And one thing I wanted to do was make sure that the Rexes were actually surrounding it, so the ones at the back were all doing damage. So I whisked them around and I managed to get them all somewhat around the Broodmother. And then we began the fighting. Although it seemed that the Broodmother was indeed much stronger as it was doing over 1000 damage consistently and even sometimes hitting me quite a few times which was a bit of a concern as I could not lose this Utyrannus. I'd got it down to almost half health but this fight was taking much longer than I had hoped and it clearly showed that this fight was much much more difficult. Oh, oh yo I'm starting, oh my god no way. Have I already lost a Rex? Oh. Some of these are so- ow. Why are some of these so bloody? Oh, I mean, we've won the five, but I'm not sure that was a W. Oh, my Rexes are so bloody. With that fight done, I then had to begin for tribute farming for the final boss fight. I took down Rexes for the arms, and then somehow used my Karcher underwater to take out this Alpha too, so quite a genius plan, if I say so myself. I was then in Snow King some more aloes for the Allosaurus brain, and then I found another wild carcher which I took down to get myself a Giganotosaurus heart. I then found another Argiga on Volcano Island. For some reason they had both spawned rather quickly, which was annoying because I had spent so many days searching and hunting for these Gigas throughout the 100 days and I couldn't find one. Before I started the dragon fight, I quickly made some giddy gear so I was able to deal with the heat in the arena. With all the tributes farmed, it was now time to summon in the Alpha Dragon. And I must say, before this fight, I had levelled up my Rexes slightly more into the melee stat, so hopefully they would survive. Right, need to get on my UT. Okay. Oh, Dragon's coming in now. Go on, guys. Go on. Oh, it is doing 770. Ow, it's hit me. 770 damage per bar, I'm not sure if that's high or not. On top of the uh, fire attack, I think it's... Ow! Why is it, why is it hit me? I'm like nowhere near. Okay, okay. Halfway already, I, I think it's going well. Okay, I'm liking this. Ah, uh, why is it me again? It's hitting me. Oh, no! I thought it was... What? What? What is happening? I'm losing so many. And we're done. I've lost so many Rexes. Uh, at, le at least it's done. Uh, we can now start preparing for the final fight. Back at base I hatched some more Rexes considering the amount I just lost. And then whilst we were raising, I went out to tame myself an Andrew Sarkis, as I really wanted to try one of these unique creatures to the Fjordor map. I snuck up behind it, but it aggroed onto me. I had clearly done something wrong. On the second try, I learned that I had to throw out the honey before getting close to it. So I did that, and I was able to hop on its back and start taming it. There's a little rage bar at the bottom of the screen, which you need to jump off before it reaches the full amount. After doing this a few more times, and following the arrows as I should, I eventually tamed it. With the Andrusarchus tamed, I went out to Volcano Island to harvest some of these burnt trees to get charcoal. The charcoal was then used to make gunpowder, which was then obviously used to make some advanced rifle bullets, the ammo type that the Andrusarchus uses in its saddle. 
With those crafted, I decided to give my Andrew Sarkis a little test run. It had a cool drifting effect, but I probably shouldn't have tried out on these Dinoraxes. Back at base, I hatched up some more Rexes, and then once they were finally grown, I began the long process of leveling them up by killing a lot of baby Rexes. And with that all done, I think it was time to finally say goodbye to my base. A base that I'd, actually I quite liked as I'd finally put some time into making myself a base. I had a pretty cool house, I had a bunch of gigas, a rip my favourite creature of all though is this card that I got. The fact that these colours are wild tamed to me is just extraordinary. But after a few days of getting everything ready, it was now time to go over to Volcano Island and summon in Alpha Femre. Right, here we are. Right, I need to be on my Andrew Sarkis for this because I'm not too well knowledge about this fight, but I know that he can attack you off your mount, I think at least, and Andrew Sarkis protects that. Right, can these guys just go over there? And he's... Yo, am I in the air? Oh, no, here come all the mini Fenris. They only take seven damage? What? Yo, what was that? That little blue thing. You know what I must say? This is hardcore. I'm surprised I've managed to make it to the final boss about dying yet. To me, I've already won. Um, Why are my Rex doing like no damage? Look at how little his health's gone down. Right, how's he able to lift up my Rex? Then? That is just not normal. Okay, what's... I don't... Is it the, that, like, icy wolf attack thing? Is that what can have damage me off my mouth? Okay, okay, we're now about... What's that, about three quarters? Ooh, I thought it was coming to me then. That attack again... What? Oh, oh, well, my ut has gone. I probably... Uh, what? My Rex is gone. I don't know. If, oh, well, we're, we're only halfway. Okay, right. I think. Are we okay now? No, nope, I've lost up. Oh no. Um. Uh. Oh dear. This is not looking good. Oh, I'm losing them literally in every single attack now. Oh, this is so not good. I don't think we're doing it. Oh, no. No way have I gone this whole 100 days challenge without dying up, and I'm not going to do the final boss. And all my Rexes are dead. Wow. Uh, what, what do I even do? I can't kill it with my Andrew Sarkis. Ah, oh, let's just go for it. Send it. 1v1 me, bro. I can even hear my otter attacking. <laughs> my otter's doing 16 damage. Ow. Alright, just kill me, mate. Just, just get this over. With that rather disappointing end to the hardcore challenge, failing at the very last hurdle. But I thoroughly enjoyed this challenge. Hardcore, I've had quite a few comments asking for it. And, well, I hope I delivered in some way. And this is going to be my last video on Ark Survival Evolved for the time being, as Ark devs have confirmed that the upgraded version being built on UB5 will be out at the end of next month in October, and I'm so looking forward to getting that and making so much content for you guys. If you guys are wanting to watch some extra content whilst we all wait for Wildcard to release Ark Survival Ascended, then check out my other videos such as my Island playthrough, or playing Extinction with only Cartridontosauruses, on my No Dino Challenge. And with my video done and Ark Survival Ascended out next month, I'll see you then. Goodbye.